Welcome to this annotated anatomy video that's going to outline the muscles of the pelvic diaphragm. So on the screen is a drawing of the superior view of the pelvis. Anteriorly we can see the pubic symphysis where the two pubic bones unite in the midline. Laterally we can see the pelvic brim, we can see obturator internus muscle lining the obturator foramen. We can also see the two ischial tuberosities and the two ischial spines and associated with these landmarks is the lesser and greater sciatic foramina. Posteriorly we can see the sacrum and the coccyx. So before we outline the muscles that form the pelvic diaphragm we need to be aware of three orifices that pass through the pelvic diaphragm to leave the pelvis and enter the perineum. Anteriorly there is the urethra and then in the female, posterior to the urethra is the vagina. And then obviously in both sexes, we have the rectum. Now before we begin to look at the muscles of the pelvic diaphragm, we must be aware of a thickening of this obturator fascia. This is known as the tendinous arch. And it's formed from, like I said, a thickening of the fascia that lines the obturator internus muscle. We have one obviously on the left and the right side of the pelvis. And these structures are important in offering the attachment sites for some of the pelvic diaphragm muscles. So let's start drawing out these pelvic diaphragm muscles. The first one I want to highlight is puborectalis. Puborectalis originates from the pubic bones and also from the tendinous arch and it runs posterior to the rectum. It forms a sling-like structure which is important in maintaining faecal continence. So here we can see coming from the pubis on either side and running posterior around the rectum we have puborectalis and I'll draw this out in red. So puborectalis and this is one of our pelvic diaphragm muscles. Posterior to puborectalis we have pubococcygeus and this muscle also comes from the tendinous arch of levator veni and it runs towards the coccyx. So here we can see both of the pubococcygeus muscles coming from the tendinous arch and running towards the coccyx. So here we can see green fibres this time of pubococcygeus. So pubococcygeus, our second muscle of our pelvic diaphragm. The third muscle is iliococcygeus and this muscle comes from the more posterior end of the tendinous arch and extends towards the coccyx. So here we can see iliococcygeus in purple, extending from the more posterior region of the tendinous arch towards the ischial spine, and it runs towards the coccyx, the inferior aspect of the sacrum. Again, we have two of these muscles, one on the left-hand side, one on the right-hand side, and here we'll just shade in iliococcygeus. So iliococcygeus is the third muscle and we can see it here in purple. These three muscles, puborectalis in red, pubococcygeus in green, and iliococcygeus in purple, are collectively known as levator ani. So levator ani consists of puborectalis, pubococcygeus, and iliococcygeus. The final muscle that forms the pelvic diaphragm is known as coccygeus and this muscle also runs from the ischial spine to the coccyx and here I'll draw it in in brown and this is the most posterior muscle of the pelvic diaphragm and here and here again obviously we have two coccygeus muscles one on the left side and one on the right side so here we have coccygeus in brown. If we add levator ani and coccygeus together, so levator ani and coccygeus together, we form our pelvic diaphragm. So remember this sheet of muscle that lines the inferior aspect of the pelvis, the pelvic diaphragm, consists of puborectalis, pubococcygeus, iliococcygeus, which is your levator ani, and add on to levator ani coccygeus and we have the pelvic diaphragm. A further muscle that is often seen in this region is piriformis. 
but piriformis doesn't form part of the pelvic diaphragm. Remember, piriformis attaches to the anterior surface of the sacrum and leaves the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen. So here in this blue, we'll draw the two piriformis muscles coming from the anterior surface of the sacrum and running out of the pelvis into the gluteal region via the greater sciatic foramen. So in blue, we have piriformis, and remember, piriformis is not part of the pelvic diaphragm. Pelvic diaphragm is levator ani plus coccygeus.